As the great poet Thomas James once said, my baby does the hanky-panky. Hanky panky. Sounds dirty, feels kind of naughty to say. Hanky panky. But what does it mean? What does it mean? Well, I mean, it means what you think it means. And keep in mind that when this became popular, people still had rumpus rooms in their house. I no longer have a rumpus room, but I do love hanky panky. Not that kind of hanky panky, you perverts. Get your mind out of the gutter. You want to see that? You go to OnlyFans. But here it's all about food. So we're going to make this. It's really easy. Uh, basic stuff, easily available, relatively inexpensive. Best part about these is you can make them ahead of time. You can stick them in the fridge overnight. You can stick them in the freezer just to have them on hand and they heat up super quick. So uh, what do you say? Let's get it done. So the first thing we're going to address is our meat situation. We got one pound of bulk sausage meat, the hot variety, and we have one pound of beef, the ground variety. So one pound of ground beef, one pound of bulk sausage. You can use Italian sausage, any kind of sausage you want, but a pound and a pound, that's what we want, two pounds of meat. We're gonna use a spatula, we're gonna break it up, we're gonna get it brown, we're gonna get it cooked. Uh, make sure it's as broken up as you can get. You want small, uniform pieces. Once it's browned off the heat, drain off that extra grease, then bring it back. We're gonna go with a medium low heat now. Use your spatula, break up any large pieces that you found, if you happen to find any. You want, again, you want this nice and uniform. Now we're gonna season it up, not salt. We're not putting salt on this yet. We're gonna put one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of onion powder, and a half a teaspoon of fresh ground black pepper. One teaspoon of what's this here sauce. Gotta have that, because that brings a whole lot of flavor. Mix it up, you want even distribution of your spices, because nobody wants a clump of onion powder. That's just gross. So spread it out, get it even. Once it's even, here's the star of the show right there. Fake plastic velvety cheese. You know the brand and I'm not gonna say the full official name because they didn't pay. Reduce your heat to low, get this melted in, fully incorporated. It takes a few minutes, but it does, it does melt evenly. I know you're gonna complain, it's fake cheese. This is what the recipe calls for, okay? What do you want from me? I didn't create it. So once it's fully melted, turn the heat off. Now we're gonna move on to address our bread situation after we test for salt, which we know is perfect because Velveeta is salty. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't say it. Anyway, bread, you should use those little cocktail loaves of pumpernickel and rye. I could not find them. Uh, I don't know if it's the supply issues or, or what. I couldn't find them. So I found some thin sliced pumpernickel bread Cut them in half, and they're the perfect size for this. They're a little bit bigger than normal, but this works, and it works very, very well. So that's your alternative. On a sprayed down with cooking spray cookie sheet, uh, covered in foil for easy cleanup, you're going to lay out your bread. If you're using a cocktail uh, bread, lay out as much as you want. I'm home by myself today, so I'm just going to make six of them and eat them all because I'm fat. We're going to... Dish out enough so you have a nice coverage. Um, I'd give you the amount, but you kind of got to eyeball it. You want you want a nice thick layer, probably as thick, if not slightly thicker than your bread. That's the best way to, to describe it. So dish it out on all your pieces of bread. Make it nice. You, you, I know you're thinking plastic cheese is disgusting, and it is, but it's delicious. And I'm fine with that. Once you have everything dished out, use a spoon to kind of smear it even on your bread because you don't want it piled up. You want to kind of get a nice layer. Now we're going to top this with some actual cheese. This way, nobody can complain, right? You got real cheese in there. Hey, it's got real cheese. You know, what do you want? I know what you want. You want real cheese, not, not, not plastic cheese, but we have plastic cheese. Anyway. Get it covered with uh, some fresh grated cheese. This is some Mexican blend that I had. Don't go too fancy on this. I mean, this is a quick, cheap, easy appetizer. We're gonna top some of them with jalapeno. You can top it with olives, roasted red peppers, tomatoes, whatever you want, sky's the limit. You do you, boo-boo. 
into the oven 400 degrees for 15 minutes. And then after 15 minutes, it comes out, it's crispy on the bottom, it's crispy on the top, it's hot, it's melty, it's gooey, it's delicious. And we need to stuff it in our face because it smells fantastic. So I'm gonna have me one of the ones with the jalapeno because I love jalapeno. I mean, these are nice and crispy. I don't know if you can hear that. The cheese on the top is crispy. It's, it's hot, it's melty. Oh, that's good. That's good. Mmm. It's salty, it's meaty. It's everything you want in your mouth. So there you have the hanky-panky. Make this for your next party. Your guests will truly enjoy a little hanky-panky, especially if you're giving it to them. So make this. If you liked it, if you tried it, drop it down in the comments. Let me know how you did. If you have a suggestion of something you want to see me make, I take suggestions. Drop that down in the comments. If you want to tell me I suck, you can drop that down in the comments. Don't forget to smash that like button. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one.